what happens if you connect a sodium ion battery in parallel with a lithium iron phosphate battery. Is it possible and is it worth it? In my last video, we compared the cost of a sodium versus a lithium battery. Sodium came in at $0.095 per watt hour, while lithium was still cheaper at $0.056 per watt hour. But now, let's take the testing even further. What if we wire them together in parallel, for a single battery bank? This is my test setup. I connected a 75 amp hour sodium ion battery in parallel with a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The output runs through this shunt, so I can see the total current and the watt hours. I'm using a 100 amp JK BMS, which is set to normal lithium iron phosphate parameters. So the BMS has no ID, it's attached to a sodium ion battery. And that's fine, because it's in parallel. The sodium just follows the voltage behavior of the lithium battery. Let me quickly talk about voltage. When you connect two or more batteries in parallel, no matter the chemistry, the batteries equalize to the same voltage. That means we have to match the voltage of the sodium ion battery to the one of lithium. Otherwise, we will overcharge or under discharge the lithium battery, which is not good. Let me show you on a voltage curve. Here we have the voltage curve of lithium overlaid with a sodium ion curve. The blue is lithium ion and this one is sodium ion. The orange lines are the working voltage of lithium. The sodium ion has to stay in between these limits. So we lose the top part and the bottom part of the sodium ion battery. Sodium works from 2 volts to 3.95 volts. And the lithium cell works from 2.5 volts to 3.65 volts. I tested the sodium ion battery cell from 3.65 volts, which is here, down to 2.5 volts. And it was 75 amp hour cell and I got 40.8 amp hours out of it using my capacity tester. That's just 51% of the total energy capacity that we're using. So we're wasting nearly half of the available energy of the sodium ion battery just by pairing it with lithium. Here's where it gets interesting. I fully charged both batteries and I'll apply a 250 watt load. Let's see how much current we draw from each battery. The current will stabilize. First, let's measure the current of the sodium ion battery. We are drawing about 20 amps, so you would expect the sodium ion battery to deliver 10 amps and the lithium battery to deliver 10 amps as well. So let's see. We can see the sodium battery is delivering 18.6 amps. And the lithium battery is delivering 0.2 amps. This was very confusing, but actually it makes perfect sense. When lithium iron phosphate is charged to 14.6 volts, it quickly settles to around 14 volts. That's known as the lithium resting voltage. The lithium battery doesn't stay at 14.6 volts. But the sodium battery will stay at 14.6 volts and they're connected in parallel. So it's like the sodium battery is talking to the lithium battery and it's saying, you're not going down without me. So the sodium ion battery 
keeps the voltage of the lithium iron battery at 14.6 volts. So that explains why the sodium ion battery delivers all the current in the beginning. The lithium battery does not hold any energy between 14.6 and the resting voltage of 14 volts. So let's look at the graph again. In the beginning, when we are at 100% state of charge, the sodium has a higher open circuit voltage because lithium is resting at 14 volts. And the battery with the highest voltage delivers the current. So in the beginning, the sodium ion battery delivers all the current. And then there comes a point when the open circuit voltage of sodium is the same as lithium. And that's where both batteries deliver 50% of the current, but only for a brief moment. Since the voltage curve of the lithium battery is flat, it will deliver all the current in the middle. And at the end, the open circuit voltage of the lithium iron phosphate battery goes down really quickly. And that's when sodium ion comes in and delivers the rest of the current to 2.5 volts. I made a simplified graph showing exactly how the batteries in parallel behave. We have the current from 0 to 20 amps and the battery state of charge from 0 to 100%. In the beginning, we saw when we discharged from 100 to 0 that sodium delivered most of the current. Then, when the voltage drops, the lithium takes over. And at the end, the sodium will deliver most of the current. We can see it when we overlay this uh, graph. So in the beginning, the sodium takes up most of the current, and that's this part. And then we have the part where they deliver 50-50, that's this part. And then the sodium iron phosphate battery has a flat voltage curve. And this part we can see here. And then the voltage of the sodium ion battery drops rapidly and the sodium ion battery takes over again. Here is the most important thing we can learn from this video. When you have a sodium and lithium battery in parallel, you need to size your cables according to the maximum current being drawn by the inverter. Not just divide the current by two batteries, like we usually do with current sharing. Now, let's see how much capacity we can use of the sodium ion battery. When I discharge the batteries together, I got a total of 1135 watt hours. I tested the lithium battery as well by itself and it delivered 675 watt hours. So the sodium ion contributed the other 460 watt hours. If we divide that by the four cells, you'll get about 115 watt hours per cell, which matches with my previous tests. Since each sodium cell is rated for 225 watt hours, we're only using 51% of its full capacity in this kind of setup. Let's talk about the cost. Let's take a larger, more economical 210 amp hour sodium ion cell, which will cost you $38 each. The usable energy we calculated is 51%, so 107 amp hours of usable capacity, or 321 watt hours. That gives us a cost of $0.118 per usable watt hour. Now let's compare that to a 280 amp hour ETH lithium iron phosphate cell, which will cost you about $50 from China. And it delivers a usable 896 watt hours. That's only $0.056 per watt hour, less than half the cost of sodium in this case. So can you mix sodium ion and lithium iron phosphate in parallel? Yes, it works. 
But is it worth it? In my opinion, not really. You lose half the usable energy of your sodium battery. And you pay more per watt hour for sodium. And you have to oversize your cables for peak current of the inverter. If you have lithium batteries and sodium batteries, it might be better to have a separate battery bank with separate inverters and then sync the output with each other. That way you can use the full voltage range of the inverter. And I made a video about that before. Do you have anything to add to this video? And what video should I make next with sodium ion? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.